Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. That's really interesting. I think uh, you've uh, made me kind of think a level deeper than maybe I have been historically with running because one thing I always found interesting is with the sport of running, you have this situation where unlike maybe other sports where there are team sports, where especially impact sports, you do a fair bit of just like teaching like, you know, for football, how to tackle or, you know, how to properly like slide in soccer or something like that before you get out there and just really go after it. Whereas running, it seems like when kids get into it, it's kind of like, oh, well, you know how to run, just go out there and do it. And like you said with the owner's manual, like it doesn't really always come with that. So I find myself teaching like run better techniques and like things to like work on with form and mechanics. But perhaps like I'm not even taking it back a step far enough where like you said, people need to learn how to just use their bodies in general before they even get around to looking at like a specific sport and the mechanics of that. Is that kind of where you're rooting some of that in? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, we could talk about breathing. It seems like it's be a sensible direction to go Mm -hmm. into with that, you know? And so with breathing, when you're running, there's different levels to examine the breath from one would be coming from a mechanical lens and saying, is my diaphragm, in a position to be able to efficiently pull my lungs down and then is there enough space in around my my rib cage in order to allow that space for my lungs to be able to fully expand Mm -hmm. you know and then what's my relationship with my you know my abdominal muscles my pelvic floor muscles and relationship to my feet if there's imbalance happening anywhere below my lungs my diaphragm then that tension has to trickle up someplace. Mm -hmm. So you can't be walking around with, you know, say you have some type of of impingement happening in your your hip or your ankle or something that's causing tension in the body. Your body will then compensate and that tension will spiral up through the rest of the system, limiting the potential, you know, respiratory potential that you may have. Mm -hmm. So for starters, thinking of just like a, a really common thing with people is for people to flare their ribs. Like that's a, th- a thing you see pretty ubiquitously because people are trying to, you know, if you want to raise your arms up over your head, we lack range of motion in our, in our shoulder girdles. So going up into flexion is challenging. And then the tendency will be to flare the ribs mm-hmm. out, which then creates instability in that relationship of the rib cage and the pelvis and the hips. You know, so just a starting point is being able to relax into your breath. You know, so if you're sitting down in a chair, you can find the, the sit bones that I see you're, like, you're well placed on right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so you can reach underneath your butt cheeks, find those little bone, sure. you know, the ischial tuberosities. And get, you can reach your butt back just a little bit so you're on the, very slightly on the front edge of those sit bones. You know, if you're on the front edge of the sit bones, then suddenly you're tilted your pelvis forward ever so slightly. The bottom vertebra, L5-S1, those are actually more of a shape of a wedge. So their natural movement pattern would be hinging forward slightly Mm -hmm. then from there you can really rest and relax with strength into your into your pelvis now from that point just starting to notice that breath into the side of the ribs into the low back into the abdomen oftentimes in the yoga world you get coached like just breathe into the belly and then you just end up distending your belly out not really actually engaging that diaphragmatic breath Mm -hmm. so a starting point would be thinking stabilizing my feet into the ground if i'm sitting on a chair stabilizing my pelvis onto the chair and then from there can i really just like let my shoulders oh, drop like bring your shoulders up to your ears for a second hold them up there squeeze tight and then oh, just let them sink down now from there take a slow inhalation through the nose and start to notice that breath specifically you put your hands on the side of the ribs And just feel that breath moving into the side of the ribs. Allow the ribs to slightly tuck down towards the hips as opposed to flaring out forward. All right, so now we're creating a stack. You know, we're stacking the cylinder from our our pelvis up to our respiratory diaphragm, up to our neck, up to our shoulders, up to our head. And then the body's able to relax into its skeletal structure. If it can relax into itself, then it's able to get a breath without having that, that, that tension. And then, you know, we can go on to the part of like, um, you know, a lot of people are, are over breathing, Sure, which is a thing. You know, so if we're just sitting here, it's an opportunity to be training our breath. But this now we're going kind of deeper into like the like our chemical physiology. Mm-hmm. So there's the structural part. But then if we're sitting here and we are, say, breathing through our mouths, 
or we're just taking more breath than is necessary. And then it's making our red blood cells less effective at releasing oxygen into our blood seam, into our bloodstream in order to be able to perform. So a practice, so it's like, okay, cool. So I'm sitting, I'm at the bank, you know, you're training for your next seemingly event. nothing going on. <laughs> but meanwhile, it's like, whoa, like I'm alive. I'm feeling the weight distribution into my feet. If I'm sitting down, I'm feeling that weight distribution in my hips. I'm feeling the breath into my low back, tractioning my lower back and inside of my ribs. I'm really feeling that diaphragm descending. I'm utilizing my, my nose to breathe. Your nose has 30, 30 plus different functions for respiration. Your mouth has pretty much none. Like your mouth is built to, to eat food, your nose is built to breathe. And so as you're breathing through your nose, you know, you're, you're releasing more nitric oxide, you're filtering the air, you're warming or cooling the air depending upon the temperature. Um, and if you can slow that breath down, which breathing through the nose dramatically does, um, I don't know how much, I think it's like two times less air comes through the nose at a time. I don't remember the exact number, but it, sno it slows it down dramatically. Uh, you're making your body literally more effective at being able to process the available oxygen that it has, as opposed to being kind of like wasteful and slobbish. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. 